We're back and we are with Mike Lemon. Mike Lemon is a casting director in Philadelphia and has worked on tons of different kinds of projects. So let me ask Mike, you've worked on a lot of feature films, mm -hmm. but maybe you can tell our viewers like some of the films that you've worked on. Well, I should probably start at the beginning. The first film that I worked on was, uh, was Philadelphia. Uh, of course, Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington, and uh, it was uh, it was an extraordinary experience. It changed my life, uh, yeah, personal, well, well, personally, well, and personally and professionally. Um, I started teaching as a result of casting that movie because I vibed with Jonathan Demme. I watched Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington do the courtroom scenes, uh, and I got it. I understood it in my heart and soul. And, and so when someone had asked me if I would teach a film workshop, I said, sure. Uh, prior to that, I'm not sure I would have had the confidence to do it. And I love teaching, and I've been doing it now for, uh, what, what's it been, 17 or 18 years now. Speaking of Jonathan Demme, I remember I was working on Silence of the Lambs, and I will never forget this scene where he's directing, and he's holding his baby in his arms. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. It was just so incredible. It's like, hey, here's a guy, he's at, he's at work. <laughs> and, and he just seemed like such a nice human being. Well, and his persona just uh, was like this mantle over the production. It was extraordinary. I don't think I've, I've had individual days and experiences that have rivaled it, but never, never a full film production that's come close to being as special as, as you, that was. And then, but you've worked on tons, tons of other yeah. projects. Yeah. Now, after casting it and spending so much time with it, are you really still able to sit, watch, and enjoy it? And if so, were there any special parts to it? I hope to be able to sit and watch and enjoy it. Sometimes, like people who read a book and then are disappointed by the version of the film, if I've read the screenplay and have made the own, my own movie in my head, sometimes, sometimes it's a little bit of a disappointment. And because I see such extraordinary things in the auditions, the auditions sometimes are so powerful that uh, that when I actually see the work up on the big screen, it's not quite the same. Oh, wow. um, well, I, I cast The Sixth Sense, for instance, and uh, wow, I, I had read the script before I'd seen the movie. Oh, they actually let you read the whole thing? Oh, they did! <laughs> and, and, and M. Night is very, you know, he's very tight about that because, of course, all the famous twists and everything. But uh, I loved the film. I thought it was wonderful. There was one that absolutely lived up to my, to my expectations, and certainly the public responded in the same way and made almost a billion dollars. Well, but there was one actor no. who played the father of the little girl who had died. Uh, his name is Greg Wood. Yeah, I've worked You've with worked Greg. with Greg. And in the audition sequence, at that point, the scene was longer, where uh, in the film, he actually just comes and faces his wife, who has killed the child. Uh, that in they actually in the audition went into a an intense confrontation, where he collapsed on the floor in tears, and it was incredibly dramatic. <laughs> it was really smart of them not to keep that in the film because it would have. It would have, it was so emotional, I think it would have peaked the film too early in that subplot rather than letting it mature into being, you know, Bruce Willis's uh, discovery at the it's end. It's funny you mention that. I was doing extra work on that, uh -huh. and, and it was in that particular scene where it oh, walked the, it down, yeah. and everybody kept saying, do not look at Bruce Willis. And I'm thinking, oh great, another actor, another crazy <laughs> actor, you can't look at <laughs> That's great. Remember I saw the That's movie, awesome. oh, okay. <laughs> And you know, Mike, there's so much noise going on here, but they're, we're still at the top of the world in downtown Baltimore. They do public tours all the time, so we may hear a little... And what an astounding thing it is. <laughs> It really is. If you've never been down here, come on down because it is astounding. 
It's and breathtaking. I, in fact, I can see Russia from here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. There's so many paparazzi over here just wanting some great shots. Of oh, is that who they are? Yes. Oh, I <laughs> thought they were my entourage. <laughs> Please don't shoot the moose. <laughs> And Mike, I wanted to know, uh, what are the challenges that you find when doing casting for such great pictures? Uh, well, sometimes, sometimes the challenges are actually in the breakdown or the description of the, the, the roles that we need to find. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps the most challenging overall was a movie called Twelve Monkeys okay, wow. with uh, Bruce Willis and, and Brad Pitt and Madeline Stowe. And the director was Terry Gilliam who was the American member of, uh, of Monty Python. The, a wonderful, wonderful man uh, with, who, who loves the casting process and loves actors, but is self-admittedly as demented as you would think, <laughs> as you would expect a Monty Python member to be. And he loves little people. Oh. He loves little people. Mm -hmm. His movies like Time Travelers, you know, are filled with little people. Well, he wanted us to find a toothless dwarf. Wow. <laughs> that was probably the single hardest challenge <laughs> I, we've ever had to face. We, didn't, we did actually not find a toothless dwarf. Mm -hmm. We found a wonderful, slightly diminutive actor from Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. Who had um, uh, false teeth, basically, so that when he removed his crowns, he had spikes of teeth oh. they, and he was willing to take his teeth out yeah. and and reveal his spiky teeth and Jonathan loved it he oh, thought that yeah. was even better than a toothless dwarf so and this and this gentleman was a really wonderful actor too so uh, 12 monkeys was a was a wild experience I love the challenge of finding the right actor for the role whatever it's going to be mm -hmm. and sometimes that's just from knowing people and having a sense of what acting is about and sometimes it's intuitive and I like it particularly if, if I don't find the actor, but the actor kind of appears to me. <laughs> now, yeah. now, how exactly does it work? And, and I'm assuming it would work from director to director. But let's say you're, you're seeing the breakdowns, uh -huh. you're seeing the character description, and you're thinking, you know what, this just doesn't seem quite right with this. Or, you know, you're seeing somebody audition, and you go, that guy, that's the person. And the director's go, nah, nah, I really don't see it. Oh, sure, that happens all the time. And so is it the director's always right, or do you have the opportunity to fight it out, or? Oh, no, I wouldn't fight with the director. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. no, 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 the director's <laughs> always right. No, no, no. <laughs> No, no, no. So, so I, I'd like to work with them again. <laughs> so basically, you can right. offer your opinion and say, yeah, I think well, this would be a... And my, I mean, Stop it! You're trying I, you, I want you to put me on the hot seat. I like it. I like it. Basically, right. I'm a good you too. <laughs> well, I, I'm actionary. I believe it. Okay. So where are we picking it up from? You're in the hot seat. <laughs> I'm in the hot seat. Okay, you're in the hot seat. Which one is? Okay. <laughs> he's got it. He's got it. Okay. Okay, so an actor comes in, reads, you love it, the director yeah. doesn't see it that way. Do you have an opportunity to really sit down and negotiate with the director, or is it really the director who makes... No, the direct, it's the director's vision. I mean, ultimately, sometimes, the studio will have to approve as well. So the director doesn't always have autonomy, complete autonomy over, over casting. Uh, but, no, I make my voice known by the people I bring in. So I may go outside the box of what they've said they want and bring in a few people that I've had this sort of inspired notion might be a different take. I might bring in a woman for a man's role uh, oh, wow. or, or vice versa. Sometimes they, they love it. I think, you know, I, I've never gotten in trouble for doing that. I think part of, part of, part of what uh, a, a film or a project would hire a casting director for is for, for their knowledge of the talent and their, their creative creativity too so I, I'm assuming too it, it also boils down to who they like working with because I mean you, you're Absolutely. married you're married to to these people for quite some time yeah yeah it uh, it's very it, it's wonderful when there's a one when there's harmony in, involved in the project and one of the first challenges for me is actually to see through the, the director's eyes to try to to try to see things the way the director sees them and I, uh, for instance, in the in the uh, uh, the Sixth Sense, there's a scene where a, where a couple comes in uh, to buy a piece of jewelry, and I was I was directing it in the tone of the film, which was suspenseful. 
And I went through like two days of auditions of this and, and Knight comes into the callbacks and he says, it's funny. <laughs> I said, what? He said, no, this scene is funny. <laughs> this scene needs to be funny. And I'm thinking, funny? <laughs> funny? It wasn't, it didn't funny. look like funny at all to me on the page or in the acting. Well, he ended up casting an Indian couple. Mm -hmm. And somehow with an Indian couple in that role, it really was funny. It took, a, it took a turn and I went to the movie, I went to the screening, the cast and crew screening of the film, the audience roared at that scene. <laughs> and as we're walking, as I'm walking out of the theater at the end, he's standing at the door and he just pointed to me and he said, see, funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the director knows what they're doing. You see, what I don't understand, and I know actors, especially if they're doing extra work mm -hmm. on film, they're always getting very upset because they're getting last minute phone calls and then things get switched. And what they don't understand is that you're giving them information because it's getting dropped on your plate at the last second. I don't know how you do that where all of a sudden uh, you'll get a phone call and all of a sudden we need 300 people for tomorrow. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> no. You know, I mean, I've done that for 20 years, 25 years. It's exhausting. It's impossible. If the, film, <laughs> if the film, if they wrap their shooting at 2 o'clock in the morning, we get a call at 2.15 in the morning saying that we need so many extras at 3 o'clock the next afternoon. Well, we've got them all lined up. It's just a matter of letting them all know, ah, oh, I need my sleep now. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just not worth it. Do you have any advice for actors? They're coming in to read for you. Oh. What, what, what should they know? Wow. Uh, <laughs> how much time do we have? <laughs> um, okay, let me, let me start out by saying I think the world's full of talent. That it's just overflowing with, with talent. And uh, if this is someone's dream, the pursue it. I mean, I, I think that's what we're here for, to pursue our dreams. That it sort of guides us along the way. It depends on how old you are, where you are, where you're from, but my, go for it, do it, take one step, do the right thing, whether it's, uh, whether it's community theater or school theater or, or whether it's uh, getting your head shot, taking some acting classes. You know, uh, most of what we do is cast in front of the camera. So if we have people, a lot of people coming to us who've only done theater, well, the language is the same, objective, motivation, relationship, all of that. But it's a very different thing Absolutely. working in front of the camera as opposed to being on the stage. It's easier. <laughs> uh, I think it's much easier myself. Well, I do. If, if, you, if you can be natural, right. then it's easier. Some people have a hard time being natural. Oh, wow. No, they yeah, do because they're, they're so geared into performance that the minute, they, the minute they hit their mark and open their mouths, all of a sudden they're talking like this. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and it, that, you know, that essentially doesn't work for what we do. You know, quite often people will, will say to me, you know, when I go into an audition, I'm scared out of my mind. As a casting yeah. director, do you have any, any words of advice for people as to what to do to help calm them sure. down? Sure, yeah, absolutely, breathe. 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 <laughs> Get yourself where you're going early. So, you, so that you don't have those extra tensions that come from like running late. Make sure you've thought it through, that you've got what you need, uh, that you've got your head shot. So you, because really it's, it's beyond just the nerves. A sense of confidence, just a quiet confidence an actor has walking into the room makes all the difference in the world and the impression we get of who that person is. And it's hard to be centered under those pressures, especially if it's something that you want really badly. Absolutely. So I have a mantra in my acting class that I, that I invite people to use, which is I don't care. I don't care. Of course you care. <laughs> of course you care. But to tell yourself over and over again, I don't care. I don't care. And it helps make you more carefree. It helps dissipate the nerves. Uh, there are lots of exercises to do to help you center, but of course if you're in a crowded room full of people at an audition, there's, I mean, I visualize just energy and going like this, you know, just shaking off any excess energy. Well, you know, if somebody looked across the room and saw me doing this, they may think, oh, he's trying to get rid of his excess energy. As a reminder, you know, Michael, we are still at the top of the world in downtown Baltimore. Oh. They are always having public tours. It's a public 
venue. We have kids running around. I had, you know, I had seven kids. I've got nine grandkids. I love kids. <laughs> Actually, part don't worry. Three. Don't let them bother you. Part of the 5K <laughs> marathon is coming right through this room. So. The St. Patrick's Day parade. I don't know. It's a busy day. And that daggone paparazzi over there. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, I know. They're so noisy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's always interesting, you know, coming in to, to read. You know, so sometimes it might just be with you. You could have... The, you know the director writers all these different people yeah you I assume that everybody there must be able to smell desperation 20 miles away oh. <laughs> and I assume if, if, if you're smelling it that person really doesn't have a shot at getting the job well no you you want you hope that someone walks into the room with a quiet confidence and it's just about being centered it's not about blowing your own horn it's not about it's not about saying I know I'm perfect for this role and coming off cocky it's just about being very centered and having the nerves under control, which is sometimes a challenge, you know, to tell people to breathe, to say, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, to let go of the extra nerves, to shake them out before you come in, so that you can hear, so that you can hear. Sometimes actors have a hard time actually hearing what the director is telling them, mm -hmm. because they're nervous and they're oh, wow. focused and they, <laughs> they want to do the, the best they can, which if they really want too badly to do the best they can, they're going to do too much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really interesting. I was talking to an agent on the West Coast. I was talking to an agent on the East Coast. And we were, we were discussing memorizing the signs mm -hmm. before you go in there and audition. In LA, the woman said, any of my clients, if they get the script two days ahead of time, it's got to be memorized. East Coast, the guy said, absolutely not. I don't want you to memorize it because then it's going to look like it's it's a you know perfect piece at this point. I want it to look like a cold read and still do a great job. What, what, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, I would I would uh, be totally familiar with it, memorize it, but hold the script in your hand. But the trick in memorization is not to lock into a patterned read or have it seem too polished, to be, but to be able to memorize it. But thinking you have it memorized and having it memorized are two different things because you can think you have it memorized in the car or in the shower and get in a room <laughs> with six or eight producers and all of a sudden, oh, like, okay. yeah. And as an actor, because I was an actor for 20 years, I had that experience more than once too where I go, oh. <laughs> or or have that for the times. You have it memorized, you walk in there and they changed it. Absolutely, of course they do. Of course they do. In fact, they may change it based on something an actor said in an audition. Has that ever happened with you? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> or you offer an idea, you know, or you're, you know, you're coming up, you're ad sure. a little bit, and all of a sudden you find everybody is. Well, the whole process is collaborative. There's no doubt about it, really. And Michael, you said that um, on Philadelphia, that was a life-changing experience for mm -hmm. you. Um, are, are there any um, future projects that you have that are your own personal babies that you'd like That's to share with us? That's a very nice question for you to ask. <laughs> Thank you. I made my first independent short film, uh, oh my gosh, eight years ago. Oh, wow. And I absolutely loved it. I wrote the screenplay and I directed it. And I want to do more of those. Uh, in fact, may I? There it is. Oh, awesome! Wow. <laughs> I know. I really that acted. Is I, awesome. I was wow. such. I was such a good kid in the 1950s and 60s. Fifties. <laughs> so I. So I, I waited. I waited until I was 54 to get my first tattoo, and I was so excited. <laughs> yeah, that is great. Yes, I went to Venice Beach in California, and I said, "I want my movie on my arm." Wow, so that that's the title. Just, it's called Touch. <laughs> that's amazing. And uh, yeah, I, that's that's hopefully where I see myself going, doing more of, telling stories, making films. But see, also, but you do so much more than just feature films. I mean, you do TV commercials, you yeah. do industrial films. Yes, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness, because <laughs> the movies come and go, the industrials and commercials are there, you know, on a consistent <laughs> basis. Actually, maybe you can explain to the audience exactly what industrial films are. Oh, well, they're educational or instructional videos that uh, uh, basically tr training how to do your job more effectively. We do a lot of work because there are so many pharmaceutical companies up in our area, a lot of work with doctors and sales reps. Do you want to do one right now? We can do one. You can be the pharmaceutical sales rep. You can be the doctor. He has objections to your sale. And the instructional video shows the right and wrong way, perhaps, of how to do this. So, you ready? Yes. Action. All right, I've got about five minutes before my next patient. What do you have? Well, how many malpractices do you have going on this year? Normally about three or four a year, okay. but um, most well, of Well, this video will help, you know, it, it will remove That's those. really good. Are you on file with me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you? Not That's yet. Really not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs>
Well, you need to be. I, I am. Absolutely. I am going but, so to it, be. Is, it is interesting, though. So if somebody would be interested to coming in, uh, coming into audition for you, yeah. if you're a casting director, you're not an agent, mm -hmm. what exactly is the process for that? Well, all the details are on our website, MikeLemonCasting.com, but we have, we have an open call once a month. First Wednesday of each month, one to three in the afternoon, unless, of course, it turns out to be a holiday. I had one guy show up on the 4th of July. <laughs> 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 Dedication. I was really angry that we weren't there. <laughs> We were pretty yeah, really right. I know, it was, it was horrible of us to take the day off. <laughs> Excuse me. And then what do you want people to do at the at, call? Well, we provide what we call cold copy, uh, a short commercial for them to prepare during the time they're, they're waiting to be seen. We like them to bring a monologue. Uh, and for me, it's a 30 to 60 second monologue, a memorized piece, uh, which is because commercial and film are so different. The monologue gives me an idea about where they would stand in terms of film auditions, mm -hmm. in terms of doing legit work. Are they? And I can tell in about five to ten seconds if somebody knows what they're doing or not. Um, and we want to see everybody. I mean, we we get casting calls for. Now we don't see babies at open call. In fact, it's for eight, <laughs> it's for eighteen and over. Kids are by appointment only. But uh, we cast everything from newborn babies to. Uh, Senior, senior, senior citizens. What, what is the youngest uh, that a, a newborn baby can be hired at? Do you know? Is I don't know. What the I know, was, like, but we've we've worked with babies who were like two weeks old. Well. So when you're working with infants, do you, is there like just a certain time period that they can work during the day? Sure, their 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 days, their hours. They can't put in fifteen sort of hour thing. days at uh, eighteen months. No, they can't. No, they're they're child labor laws in every state in the country, <laughs> thank goodness. And they differ. Thank you. the procedures and laws differ from state to state, so it would be a, a smart idea if you want to get your youngster in the business to go to your own state's uh, labor department website and find out what the, what the laws are so you're protecting your own child. There's actually there's a good uh, website, it's uh, Children in Film, and they have tons of information. Well, certainly with people with young kids, you know, go to the website, you know, either go to Google, find out what the child labor laws are like in your sure. particular state, and then... You know, yeah, just responsible parenting, that's all. One thing I, I did forget to, to follow up with, so when somebody does come in with a monologue, mm -hmm. you're saying 30 to 60 seconds, any particular ideas? I mean, sometimes well, I hear, you know, I don't, don't hear sad stuff all day long. and Because because we don't do any classical stuff. I don't want to see Shakespeare. <laughs> and it's not that I don't admire Shakespeare, but right. I don't want to see it. But I don't care if it's comedic or dramatic, whatever you feel like you want to do. It, as, of course, as a tradition as an actor, you would have a comedic monologue and a dramatic monologue, and sometimes people have both. I'll ask for both. See both both faces. But I assume the most yeah. important thing is that it's age appropriate and it's something that yeah. you know makes sense for you know, the individual. Yeah, person. absolutely. And Michael, please elaborate on your acting career. You know what? Call me Mike. <laughs> Mike. Call me Mike. <laughs> Call me Mike. Everybody calls me Mike. Uh, my acting career. Yeah. Oh, gee. You want to know about the acting she, career? She, you asked the best question. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave. I'll see you. Thank you very much. <laughs> my acting career. How about I tell you how I got started in my oh, acting absolutely career? Oh, absolutely. I was working yeah. at a department store in retailing. And I, I was working at a department store in retailing, and I was, I was uh, doing community theater at the time, and I missed three big sale days in a row at the department oh. store because I was doing community theater. So the store manager called me in and said, Mike, what do you want to be, a retailer or an actor? And I actually told him I wanted to be an actor, <laughs> and he fired me. Oh, wow. Well. So I thought, okay, well, I guess I'm going to be an actor, and I had one child and one on the way. I got a call from a game show from from a Merv Griffin Productions oh, in New cool. York inviting me to be on a game show oh, that is so called awesome. The Big Showdown, which only ran for a couple of years. And of course I said, yeah, I was totally available yeah. so that I <laughs> could be on the show. I won $6,000, which was what I made working for a whole year at Strawbridge. Oh, that is so cool. But I asked him, why are you calling me out of the middle of nowhere to be, well, I'd been on Jeopardy four years before. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, I did didn't you? Know that. And I had done really well. I was way ahead at the end of Double Jeopardy, but I didn't wager enough at the end, so I lost by $20. Oh. But here, jump forward four years later, and when I asked why they were calling me, they said, well, we went back through all of our old Jeopardy tapes, and we picked our favorite losers. <laughs> <laughs> so See? my whole life I've just sort of seen myself and cherished and loved myself for being a favorite loser. Hey. You know, you could be a winner if you want to, but <laughs> I get to be a favorite loser. Yeah, and if you're never a loser, then nobody else can be a winner. That, and that's not fair. 
Wow. <laughs> and to be fair. She's smart as well as beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so what kind of acting projects did you... Oh, boy. Well, I was a SAG member and, a, and an AFTER member, and I did... Now, was this in back, Pennsylvania? Or yeah, this was in Philly. And I did background work on films and in major roles in industrial films. So I was kind of like an industrial king, and I was slim and trim, and I was, I was the ultimate pharmaceutical sales rep back then. <laughs> Because I could say those convoluted words without having a clue what they meant <laughs> and make it sound like I did. Uh, I did dinner theater. Da, 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 oh. da, 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 da. I did Harold Hill and the Music Man. And, <laughs> oh, uh, I had. So are you a I had, an alto, a baritone? Uh, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> sort of all those things. Uh, I was the luckiest guy because I, I, my friends from college who went off to New York to be actors. I think we're probably waiting tables. Mm -hmm. I was performing six, you know, should I, tell, should I tell you that I was making like 15 bucks a show? Oh. But I was, I was getting, I was making 15 bucks. Plus right, a meal. Yeah. For doing what I, plus a meal. <laughs> plus a meal. Oh man, it was yeah. really good. Any meal. tips in there? No? Yeah. What? No. Were there any tips? No. Oh, wow. But I didn't have to serve, you know, some But what an experience show. though. It was amazing. And we'd do six shows a week in front of 600, 900 people. And mm -hmm. I loved it. Oh. And so. Yeah, I loved being an actor, and I never thought I was going to be anything else. Until one day, uh, my friend Alina DeSantos, she and I oh. had done children. Uh, do you remember Alina? Sure. She and I had done children's theater together. And she was a year old, uh, younger than me, and she played my mother in children's <laughs> theater, and I never let her live it down. <laughs> do you still call her I mom? Call, <laughs> we don't talk anymore, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> she... Uh, she uh, I called her to see about doing some background work on Witness with Harrison Ford and Kelly McGillis. Wow. And she was frantic on the other end of the line. And I, she said, no, call me tomorrow. Well, I, I picked the phone right back up and I said, uh, would, can I come, would you like some help? Could I come in and answer the phone for you? And she said, well, I can't afford to pay you anything. I said, well, honey, I'm not doing anything except waiting for a call. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I'd be happy to do it. And I went in and answered the phones. And three days of being in her office, I knew I wanted to be a casting director. <laughs> and really, the minute I wanted to be a casting director, I didn't really want to be an actor anymore, even though I continued to do it for a while. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons why actors love auditioning with you, because you're an actor. Yeah. You know, and you, you, you get it, you understand, yeah. you can speak the language. Well, I love reading with people. I love being by the camera and reading with someone. It allows me to do my actor thing <laughs> now, without having the camera on me. Now, you had some very interesting discoveries. I remember hearing you talk about a story of discovering a very famous actor. Oh, actor, actress. Well, I, I actor, call, I call women, all yes, so women, are I. Now, women are now actors. Okay, <laughs> That's right. I get it. Hey, I'm, it's 2010. I'm an old generation, <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, except I, I mean, I didn't really, but I think she booked her first professional job through me. Uh, I was I was at Outback Steakhouse. I love steak, so <laughs> Outback Steakhouse and with a friend, and he ran into a friend who was with his girlfriend, and I took one look at her and thought, "Wow, she's something." Well, it turns out they were traveling through Philadelphia from West Virginia. They just graduated from. Uh, uh, University, University of West Virginia, and she was on her way to New York to start her acting career. And I had an audition the next morning. I knew she was going to be right for it. And she said, "Oh, we're going to New York." I said, "Please stop by the office on your way to, on your way out of town, and audition for this." And she booked the job. And she came down and did this this short film, this short film, and about oh, I don't know, several years later, eight years later, or so. I'd heard all, all all this talk about Jennifer Garner, but I, I didn't wow. know who she was. And one day I'm just flipping through my headshot files. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, there's Jennifer Garner. And I pulled it out. <laughs> oh my gosh, she just won two Emmys for, oh, wow. uh, for what was the show? A, 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 alias? The, the, right. I, think that, I think that was it. I think that was it. Jennifer Garner, Mrs. Affleck, is, got her first professional job through my office. She might remember the story. <laughs> Hi, Jen. <laughs> Any industrials for her, maybe? Oh, well, I, you know, I, I'm quite sure our clients couldn't afford that budget at this point. But, yeah, that was, that was fun. That's fun to be able to do that. A couple of people, Ryan Phillippe and Seth Green, auditioned for me when they were like 10, 11 years old. And, uh, you know, and have gone on to do great things. How about so, Bam? 
Bam? Bam? I've never met Bam. I, I, would, I wouldn't mind working with, with Bam. I'd love to get your thoughts on your opinion with the new tax incentives going on in, you know, up and down the East Coast oh for boy. filmmakers. What's that going to do for us down here? Well, we have to do it to remain competitive mm -hmm. because states like Michigan and uh, Louisiana and New Mexico are all offering tax Georgia. incentives. Georgia. That if, if the state is not offering tax incentive, film, filmmakers are not even going to come scout locations there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's gotten that competitive. It used to be that everything went to Canada. Okay. Now it's going to other states, which, you know, uh, of most of the work. L.A. is, is, LA is crying right now. Are they because coming over here now? The, well, there's, <laughs> there's more work being done outside of Los Angeles than in Los Angeles now, and I don't think... You know, I, I don't think a lot of the actors in L.A. are happy about that. Well, I remember hearing Barry Levinson say, you know, a Baltimore-born guy, he said, you know, I'd love to shoot here, can't afford to. Wow. Okay. Well, Baltimore, though, was, uh, you guys were just hopping crazy in Philadelphia. We were, like, sucking our thumbs, saying, oh, God, I wish I was in Baltimore. <laughs> When, you know, when all the series were going on here, that was gangbusters. Happily, there were Philadelphia actors who were able to come down and work on uh, work on Homicide, Homicide and The Wire, and just like the Baltimore actors get to come to Philly and work. Um, I'm optimistic, also for us up in Philadelphia, assuming, assuming the government doesn't find anything wrong with the Comcast NBC deal, mm -hmm. that I, I even heard somebody on it, uh, Morning Joe the other day saying, yeah, NBC is going to become a philocentric company. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be a good thing for us if, if that was the case? And a good thing for Baltimore as well because it's a lot closer than New York. Mm. You know, kind of getting back to your acting work, do you remember any, any intimacy? Uh. You know, you're <laughs> acting and you're thinking, what in the world am I doing this for? Uh. I, don't, I, find, I find those things. No, I knew, I, knew I, well, I knew why I was doing because I, did, I didn't want to grow up. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I was I had Peter Pan. Now, did you, know, you study I, theater? In I tried. I tried, but it was too much work. <laughs> <laughs> it was too much work to study theater. You know, they were doing theater. And I didn't want to do theater. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to play. I wanted and to take up my good? hands and have fun. Was he good, Aaron? <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes, I was. I was great. Michael. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> well, you know, Mike. I want to. I want to know where can we see Touched? Are we able to see it? Or? No, it's it's not it's not available anymore. <gasps> it was distributed for five years. Okay. Send me an email. Okay. <laughs> Send me an email. I may be able to get you a copy. <laughs> um, but yeah, as far as acting is concerned, I'll tell you about my first film experience. Um, it was an independent film uh, with, it was called Independence, <laughs> actually, and I was wearing a tri-corner hat, it was colonial days, and we were at a farmer's market, and it was this long dolly shot down in front of all these booths of merchandise, and the director came through the crowd and picked some of us to stand behind the booths to hawk our wares. And he came down then and pointed to me, among others, and said, okay, hawk them, hold up your product and hawk them. Well, I didn't know, being it was a SAG project, that if the director directed me and gave me a line to say that I was, I was going to get my Screen Actors Guild card on my first movie, oh, I wow. was, I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't know why the SAG actors were all over there giving me dirty looks. <laughs> but guess what I was selling? Pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> they said you were good at it. Sure, they would have. They would have. Yeah, they, they <laughs> probably had said, yeah, Ben Franklin's <laughs> cure all. No, I was selling lemons. Oh, yeah. That yeah, isn't that cool. ironic? That is a cool so my yeah. first word in front of any camera was lemons. That's funny. Talk about self-promoting. I, I know that's what I thought too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I love the. I always tell people. List your special skills, because they're really important. But don't list them if you can't do them. Well, I was hired with four of my kids to do a commercial for a radio station in St. Louis, and my kids can all sing. So we, did, we were doing a commercial for ta singing Take Me Home Country Roads, mm -hmm. <laughs> riding down a country road in a Jeep. And we got to the set in the morning, and you know we'd gone into the audition and so. 
but nobody ever asked me if I could drive <laughs> standard transportation. <laughs> no. Oh, I wow. Thank goodness the country road was on a slight decline. <laughs> so I would get behind the wheel, put it in neutral, two, two PAs would get behind the Jeep, give it a shove, jump in the ditch, because the camera was mounted on the, on the front of the that Jeep, and we'd sing, take me home. <laughs> <laughs> Down to the bottom of the hill. <laughs> I'd hop in the back seat. They'd drive me to the top and push me down the hill That's again. Fine. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. I loved. I loved being an actor uh, when I was doing it. You know, sometimes I've seen you talking about special skills. People putting things like you know, I can fit to a suitcase. You know, those kinds of. You, yeah. must, you must run across some really weird. Well, sometimes I sometimes I'll challenge them. You know, to, to <laughs> show it. All right. Yeah. So you get as long as it doesn't involve. What, what's the strangest thing on on your special skill list um, and you'd be the thinking the strength <laughs> I don't really have strength well as a professional guitarist oh it's unusual. did you bring your guitar no I, I hung uh -huh. up my fingers uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I actually yeah. have no list because I can do anything I just need to yeah, there's no limits to what I can do. I can do, do. anything. Yeah. Well, I've seen people kicked off of sets. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, who, who claim that they could do things. Yeah, and they couldn't. They could, they could and that's not well, yeah, you know, and I don't say that, yes, I can do this and this and this. I say, show me what to do and I will do it. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually, I can tell you, and I've been on sets where people claim they can do certain things. And they do. Oh, yeah, I would never do that. And they had shut down production. You would never do that to me twice. No, I would never do it, ever. Uh -uh. <laughs> Bang. Hey, I don't, Bang. Yeah, I'm not okay. a faker. I do it. Wow. Yeah, I don't fake. All right. <laughs> hey, Mike, just speaking of films, I know you also worked on The Village, cast yes. that, that entire project yes. as well. Signs. Signs. Yeah. Oh, that's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, up, awesome. up close and personal. Fallen, uh, Annapolis. Anything that we would have known of? Or, <laughs> 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 or anything coming out that you might, might hear about. I'm really excited about a film called The Best and the Brightest with Neil Patrick Harris oh, wow. uh, that should be coming out this summer. Hysterically funny. Oh, he is, he is so funny. Hysterically yeah. funny. <laughs> and you know, it's funny, you know, we always talk about, you know, about films and all, but you know, the bread and butter for, for actors it, it's going to be TV commercials, which is, that's where SAG yeah. actors make their most money. Right. And certainly industrials. I mean, I used to be able to make a living just off of industrial films. I, well, I did too. That was my, that was my bread and butter as well. And the people who are doing those kind of, that kind of work are here, which is very helpful. You know, the, 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 uh, right here in this, right here in this <laughs> building, right there. you know, Van Zandt, <laughs> the agency here, we cast commercials for them. Um, you know, over the years, right, right here in this very building. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, and there, there are people who will not want to do commercials or industrials because they want to act, <laughs> and it to me that's really short-sighted because it's certainly acting. Mm, in its own way, it's acting. Mm -hmm. And I know you can do them all. <laughs> <laughs> that's, hey, what I, that's what I hear. I will try. That's <laughs> what I hear. Anyway, we will see. Okay. Listen. This has been wonderful, Michael. Thank I've you had so a much. Blast. Thank you. Aaron. So nice to see you. And would you like to say a couple words as we're winding up here? Mike. Yes. Mike. Yes. Mike. Yes. Mike. Mike. If you great. ever want to yes. work again, <laughs> this now. Yes. It's been great. It has. It's we been have fun. had an awesome time. We have learned so much about Michael Lemon on this ah. episode. Oh, she did it again. You, did we it. Have, you said Michael. <laughs> we got his tattoo. Oh he showed us his tattoo. How many people have seen his tattoo? Huh? That's true. <laughs> well, well, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll have Mike, uh, Mike back again. And it's been a pleasure having you here. Hi. See you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>